In today's video, I talk about how you can turn this into a more reasonable I'm talking about some things that you should never do when you're asking for help with your 3D printer. So you can figure out your issues and fix them as quickly as possible and get back to printing some sweet minis and terrain. Let's do it. Hey there, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Our Facebook community, the Tabletop 3D Printing Guild, just hit 10,000 members, which is really cool and exciting. As a result, we've just started doing these weekly threads, and one of those threads is Trouble Tuesdays. And it's a weekly thread that we made so that people who have troubleshooting questions can post them, because as the guild has gotten bigger, Troubleshooting requests have also gone up quite a bit, and I'm not making this video because of that. I'm making this video because I remember very clearly what it was like to be new. In case you don't know my story, I spent about a month trying to get a single print out of my CR-10. And when I did finally get it, something I think most people don't realize when they get into a hobby like 3D printing is the kind of information you provide when you're trying to troubleshoot something and you post something online is pretty often directly related to the type and quality of responses that you get. And this is true regardless of where you post, whether it's Facebook, Reddit, a forum, wherever it is. I've been guilty of doing these things before, which is why I want to share from, from my experience so that you can learn from that and so that we as a community can um, have better troubleshooting posts and help each other out just a little bit better. This video will feel a little bit more conversational than some of my normal videos and I hope you enjoy that kind of style. I think it's fitting for this type of video. The first and most common thing I see folks doing when they ask for help with their 3D printer is not including their printer model, the filament they're using, and simple things like the temperature. I don't think anybody's gonna fault you for not including you know, the Ender 3 motherboard model number if you're troubleshooting adhesion problems and you post about your first layer. But even if you know you post and you kind of walk through what you did, but you never say what type of printer you have, you're leaving a lot out for the person to guess and assume. And there is just frankly so much that you can tell just by saying running a stock Ender 3, I'm running XYZ filament, and I'm running PLA at 205 or whatever you're saying because for the most part you look at that and say that's normal But if you have anything that's off This is like such a quick fix that most people recognize in my opinion the absolute minimum Level of detail for your hardware per se that you need to share is what printer you're using What type of filament you're using is it PLA is it pet G is it ABS is it TPU is it something else? How hot you're printing and how hot your bed is if you have a heated bed Second thing you shouldn't do when asking for help troubleshooting your 3D printer is not including at least one clear picture of what's going on. This might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people post this elaborate story with no picture. And sometimes the story works, but I wanna say most of the time, a picture, a video, it gives a much better idea. In 3D printing, in my opinion, a picture is worth 10,000 words because I can tell whether you're having first layer issues which can affect the rest of your print or you know sometimes it just might be other issues like bed leveling issues or running your filament too hot or too cold or whatever the case might be. Those are things that people who've been 3D printing for a while can catch on and a picture will help tell that story that you're trying to tell. Just make sure that the lighting is as good as possible. Don't blast it with like a light with your phone light but you know, if you want to wait till daytime to take a picture in the daylight, that works pretty well. Having good focus, good lighting, it doesn't have to be like professional quality, but just having it clear is going to really help us troubleshoot and help us um, get to the real bottom of what's going on and not have to guess if that fuzzy benchy is actually uh, vibrations or whether it's layer shift or what, or whether that's just a perfect benching. And if you really don't have access to any of these things, which I hope you, I hope you have access to daylight, you can always just post what you got. You know, that's better than nothing. The third sin, if you will, of troubleshooting your 3D printer and asking for help online is not saying what you've done to try and fix this yourself before posting. Just saying help without walking through what you've done is generally a good way to just get a bunch of follow-up questions. 
What printer do you have? What have you tried to do to fix it? What videos have you looked at? Or you'll get a bunch of suggestions. Watch this video, this will fix your problem. And you'll get three videos on the same exact subject. To avoid skipping the kind of back and forth ping pong that happens, it's best to just lay out what you've done. If your question was, my hot end stopped working and I don't know what to do, help. I think a better way to say that would be, my hot end stopped extruding filament in the middle of this print. Show picture of print. I tried to unclog my printer using the Thomas and Ladder video and still nothing. I've tried changing the nozzle, that didn't work. I can push filament out through the nozzle, but it still doesn't work when I put it on a print. I think there's a clog, but I'm not sure. What do you guys think is wrong? That is long, but so much better for somebody trying to read this and say, how can I help internet stranger Danny or whatever, whoever it is, so they can get printing again. Also, you might get a response saying, you know, your limit switch might have uh, fallen out by mistake. <sighs> you might have noticed I mentioned a video in my last answer. I'm not saying you always have to go to YouTube to find your answers, but this does segue to my next point, which is you should never ever post without searching for an answer before. Whether it's searching on the forum that you're posting on, whether it's searching in Facebook, here on YouTube, searching for a solution to the problem that you're experiencing, you should always search. There is so much information. In many ways, that's how I learned how to fix my problem, because I'm a very visual kind of learner. And hey, I understand the temptation to just want to post and get an instant answer, but I'll be honest, most of the time it is an instant. And in many times, people will give you six different answers and it doesn't really help you narrow it down anymore. If you really don't know where to start, if you're one of those people that doesn't know the name of all the parts or doesn't understand kind of what the failure is that you're looking at, but you know it's not looking right, I suggest looking at the Simplify 3D Troubleshooting Guide. It's a really good, simple visual guide that helped me a lot when I was beginning to understand, oh, I'm looking at delamination or I'm looking at, you know, adhesion problems or whatever the case might be. That's a great place to start. Really though, the reason I suggest this is because you very well may find your answer in those threads, not even have to post in the first place. And trust me, if you post something and you're really not getting the type of response that you want, it can be super frustrating. So there you go. <laughs> and if you did search, but you couldn't find anything, that's a great thing to include in the post. Trust me, people will appreciate the effort of you saying, hey, look, I searched, I couldn't find it. I'm so sorry. Most people say, forgiven, I appreciate it. Because people love to help people who are trying to help themselves. The fact that 3D printing hobbyists have to do this, look and search for a fix, is one of the reasons why I think 3D printing is still considered a tinker's hobby. Because unlike a home printer, which tells you exactly what the problem is, how to fix it, we don't have that luxury and we have to do the work ourselves and figure out what's going on and try to fix it. So if you're trying to find it and you're sharing, hey, this is where I look, this is what I've tried, people I think will see you trying and they'll be much more willing to help. There's joy in being a mentor. There's not nearly as much joy in being a crutch, which is a perfect segue for the next thing you should never do when you're asking for 3D printing troubleshooting help, which is get all this help and never say what happened or what came of it. Never say how you fixed it. Any of the fixes worked. If you're even still alive, are you alive? I hope. Probably this is the sin, if you will, that I am most guilty of breaking, but it's probably the most important one because what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna find your thread where you said, hey, that fix that you told me for the bed level worked so well, the springs made the difference. Somebody's gonna come back and see that like six months later and they're gonna, and this happens to me, happens to the people in the guild even. They'll post in an old thread and revive it and it'll say, dude, this worked for me. Thank you so much. And at that moment, you're just like, oh, you know, it made the difference. And that's right. You're gonna make a difference in other people's lives without even proactively posting because you're making something for the future, right? And this is obviously best with like forums that are um, generally a little bit easier to search and things like that. But I think most people congregate towards Facebook and Reddit these days. And those have search functions, which generally work pretty well too. At least uh, in my experience when looking for issues like this. Now, the last thing you should never do when you're asking for help troubleshooting your 3D printer online is to give up. Now, when I was new, 
broke nozzles multiple times, scratched my bed, used the wrong voltage thermistor when changing out the cartridge. <laughs> and I did a lot of stuff just trying to fix my problems and I learned from all of it. And so many people helped me throughout that process of learning and so many people still help me all the time. I learned so much from other people in the community because I am by no means the person with all the answers. None of us are really. There's no perfect way to do things in this hobby. This is real talk. And I've had several of these kind of periods where I felt like all my printers just weren't working. My fixes weren't fixing anything. And what I did was I took a break. I took a break from my printer. I let them sit. I didn't worry about what I was gonna be printing. I didn't worry about the time that I was wasting by not printing anything. And even with the YouTube channel, this made the difference. Even if that fix was really like a 30 minute or a one hour fix, it helped me to kind of get away from the problem, to do some painting, to work on my D&D campaign for my group, to do other things besides 3D printing and take a breather from the hobby that was frustrating me, right? That's why we do this as a hobby, not professionally, so that we can enjoy it. And if it ever stops being enjoyable, I think it's okay to take that break and come back to it later rejuvenated, refreshed, ready to fix it. And that's what I did, right? I took like a two month break at one point from printing anything. And what I did was came back and in like three nights, fixed like all four of my printers that were down. And then they've all been printing pretty much since. And I think that's okay. I've been happier that way. And I think a lot of other people who worry so much about like the efficiency and the productivity would do well to just remember that these things happen in this hobby and this journey is full of these really, really high highs, like printing such cool stuff and seeing the end results and some really low lows, like, you know, having a 30 hour print going and then on the 20th hour, you get layer shift that ruins your print that you can't fix. You know, all these things have happened to me and I know they've happened to some of you and they will happen to some of you. And this is just part of the journey of 3D printing, but it's just, Really incredible to be on that journey and see things pop up out of nowhere, my opinion at least. So that's my list. What are some things that you think should or should not be included when people are posting, asking for help to fix their printers? Looking forward to reading all your answers and I'm sure other people who are new will be looking forward to it as well. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like. And if you do like this type of content, subscribe. Love to have you here every week. If you wanna support the channel, the best way to do so is to visit our shop below, pick up some cool models, for your own table. Thanks again for watching, happy printing, and happy gaming.